Book Tube. Today I'm coming to you with another bookish challenge video. I've done the alphabet book challenge, I've done the first sentence book challenge. Today we are doing the bookshelf scavenger hunt. Now obviously there are a lot of versions of this. It's pretty open-ended, but today I'm just going to do two versions of this that I found online. I'll probably make a part two of this video in the future because there are just so many bookshelf scavenger hunts, but I'll leave the creators of these ones in the description. Let's get into the first challenge that I picked out. All right, so the first challenge is to find a book that starts and ends with the letter N. This one is definitely going to be a hard one because that's the T. You're supposed to do this in a library, but like COVID-19. All right, so somewhat predictably, I don't have this challenge. How many books on my TBR even do have this? I'm really curious. All right, so there's this book on my TBR that does satisfy this challenge, and that is Nice Try Jane Sinner, which I really want to get to, but I do not own that one right now. But that is literally the entire book on my entire TBR that satisfies that challenge, so I'm okay with not getting that one. So the next challenge is to find a book cover that is mostly brown. I have to say these are pretty weird challenges. Definitely a plus. So, should I look at like brown spines? Like how am I supposed to go at this? Okay, so the City of Ember is like a brownish red. Would you agree? Like, that's like a really like brown red. I'm gonna count this. I mean, it's supposed to be Ember because you guys are smart. But it looks more like a brown, so I'm going to use this for this challenge. Alright, so the next challenge is to find a book that is based on a true story. I know I have that one, I just have to find it. Alright, that is A Long Walk to Water. This is, I think, based on two true stories in the country of Sudan. I think this book is highly underrated. It's about Salva, who's this lost boy, and gets abandoned by his people. And so he has to try to make his way while there's a, this war covering Africa. And then there's Naya, who has to go to the pod to fetch water for her family every day, eight hours every day, they're back. And it's just a really poetic and beautiful story. And it's also pretty short. So yeah, I just highly recommend this story. I actually have lots of these books for some reason. All right, so the next challenge is to find a multi-perspective book. And I'm going to go with Slay. So you wouldn't think it's a multi-perspective book from the synopsis. It actually does filter in like some important characters or just side characters perspectives like they have one chapter but they're there in the story this is the next chapter book club pick of the month for the month of july our live show is on august 2nd over at troy reed's channel all the description you need is in the description box below i highly recommend you come join us it's going to be a lot of fun i love this book so much and it's just going to be really interesting talking about it. All right, so the next challenge is to find a book you read last year and so for this one i'm going to go with my all-time favorite book and that is do you see the gap? Looking for Alaska by John Green. This book, I, I can't stress enough just how good it is. It's so poetic and I empathize so deeply with our main character. And I just loved how the story progressed and how it talked about life and death and meaning. And I truly think this is one of John Green's more powerful books to date. And it just filtered so many of these like religious studies while also having a deeply enthralling story. And I know John Green is deeply hated on booktube but i just love this book so so much but yeah i read it last year and it's one of the main reasons i'm talking with you guys today so you can thank looking for alaska for the monstrosity that is me i'm sorry all right so the next prompt is to find the most recent book that you bought and that is actually radio silence but it hasn't arrived yet but before that i bought such a fun age which also hasn't arrived yet but before that i bought a map of days which is also one of my all-time favorite books were mentioned in all the great ones today. This was just the excellent new beginning to this new Miss Peregrine series. It had everything that I loved. It had an excellent romance with an excellent adventure and I, it, I could not put this book down. It was just so good. I loved the idea of this peculiar America and I just love seeing all the characters blossom and get in these arguments. And while The Comfort of the Birds was pretty disappointing, I really, really enjoy this book. It will always live in my heart, and I need to give it a reread, even though I read it, like, what, a month ago, two months ago? It's it's really good, guys. All right, so the next prompt is to find a book that you do not like. I actually made an entire video why I don't like this book. Mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Just watch the video. Well, oh, the challenge was to find a book cover you don't like. Stupid. I'm pretty basic when it comes to book covers. I know there's some that I hate, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Like, I pretty much love most book covers. All book covers in YA are pretty good these days. Like, they're getting so much better at making book covers. I guess I don't really like the Paper Towns cover. Like, they didn't do anything. They just put a close-up of a paper clip on a map and blurred out the back. Like, I could have made this cover. 
follow my Twitter. I'm going to try to make this cover actually. But yeah, it's pretty basic and it is pretty outdated, so I can see why it's not very good. I guess I still kind of like this cover. I just don't like it as much as I love all the other covers I own. And I also don't like the perks of being a wallflower cover. It's all the way up there. I don't want to grab it. It's just iconic. Like, everyone who sees it at the beginning, I don't think they like it. But it's just, like, so simplistic and so iconic. Like, it's one of the, the most iconic YA books ever. And for that reason alone, like, the cover is still endearing in a way. So that's why I'm not going to include it. But I just wanted to say that because the cover, is it good? It just works. All right, so the next prompt is to find a retelling. Yikarella, Cinderella is dead. And I'm sure I have many more, but that is the ones I can find right now. Ever since I read Yikarella, I've just developed this thing for retellings for some reason. Like, I just love them so much. I love how the author changes the original storyline to match this new story, changing some things, adapting it into this fantasy setting or this contemporary setting, changing how the character's story arcs go, and just adapting. I just love seeing that process in action. And it's just so interesting to me. Uh, I do feel like we have way too many of uh, Cinderella retellings. Like, we need more diversity with our retellings. Like, give me some Beauty and the Beast retellings, some Snow White retellings. And although those are not as iconic and endearing, I mean, we still know what Snow White is, right? Like, my parents didn't even read those stories to me as good. I just know those stories. All right, find a book that is also a movie. Where do I start? The first book that I saw was Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. I liked it until the ending. Um, I got like, what, 30 minutes into the movie and then I just didn't want to see the ending, so I just quit. I do want to give this movie another chance, maybe not this book, but I do want to just watch the movie if I'm free, because I think it is a good movie and lots of people like it. And I also want to try The Sun is Also a Star, because I think I might really like it. I thought it might be Insta Love You at first, because it's literally set in one day and it's about a romance. So you, you can see where my brain was going, right? But most people are saying that it's actually a really good romance. So I'm really excited to read it, but yeah, this book, it was, the characters were okay. It, the story was overall okay until the ending just made it worse. And that's really this book in a nutshell. Decent until it wasn't. All right, so your next prompt is to find a book written this year. And so I could go with the book that I already mentioned, Cinderella is Dead. But instead I'll mention another book. I think this came out this year, I'm pretty sure. Yep, 2020, and that is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I mentioned this in my July wrap-up. I also mentioned Slay in my July wrap-up. So definitely go watch that one after you watch this one. I've said the synopsis so many times, so I'm not going to say it again. But it's basically about this girl that is counting on the scholarship money and then doesn't get it. So she signs up for prom because prom is like a huge thing in the place where she lives. But then she falls in love with her competitor and things become so much more complicated. And there was friendship in this book. There was identity. There was education. There was just so much that I loved in this book. And the writing in this book for a debut author was also really good. So I just highly recommend You Should See Me at a Crowd. And it's also really fluffy contemporary, which sometimes is good. And this book was amazing. All right, so your next prompt is to find a nonfiction book. I already mentioned A Long Walk From Water. All right, are you late for me to recommend high quality literature? Who was Frank Lloyd Wright? Who was Dr. Seuss? Where is our solar system? Where is the Par Par Parthenon? Parthenon? Where is Niagara Falls? These are the recommendations you came here to see, right? Right. I'm pretty sure this book is not fiction. Yeah, more of Ruskin Bond's finest reason on fiction pieces. I picked this on a whim at the airport because I just needed something to read, even though I think I already had two books, but we don't talk about that. And I really love this book. I forget if I finished, but the stories I did read were just really gripping. I really want to try more of Ruskin Bond because he was just such a good storyteller in this book. And I still remember shards of the stories I did read, which for it being such a long time ago that I read this is really good. I, and I remember his stories and his author's note in the beginning just being so powerful and endearing especially because I can relate to the author so much. I, I gave you two very solid recommendations, didn't I? I mean, are you going to pick up an all, Upon an Old While Dreaming? Or are you going to pick up the Who Was? Because I think we made our decision here. Who Was, right? All right, so the next prompt is to find a book that you've told others to read. I mean, I'm literally talking to you guys right now, and I'm telling you guys to read a lot of books. So, like... Just look at all the books I've mentioned on this channel. Alright, so your next prompt is to find a book with a tree on it. I wish I had the giver's 
tree, right? That's what it's called, the giving tree. But on, oh, here we go. That was easy. A separate piece. I still have not read this book, but I got it because I'm going to a boarding school. And this is set in a boarding school as well. So I just really wanted to pick up this book because when I searched up like top boarding school books, this was one of the books that came up. And this one, obviously, is a tree. It's right there. It's gorgeous. It's not gorgeous, but it's a tree. All right, so the next prompt is one that I will not be able to do. Find a book where the author's name is the same as your first, middle, or last. My first name is Sakrup. Nope. Uh, my middle name is Sagu. Nope. My, my last name is Singh. I'm pretty sure there's a romance writer that has Singh as her last name, but other than that, I definitely do not have a Singh on this shelf. So yeah, I knew I wouldn't be able to do this one. The next prompt is to find a book you've read more than once. I actually think this might be hard. I'm pretty sure I read Looking for Alaska twice. I mean, you guys won't be able to tell. You you don't know that. But I'm pretty sure I have. But yeah, I don't read a lot of books twice now, and I'm not going to. I mean, I do want to reread some of my favorites. There are just so many books on my TBR that I need to get to, and I just don't have the time reread books so yeah i don't really reread books but i think i might have reread looking for alaska and so the next prompt is to find a book that you did not finish i.e dnf and so i'm going to go with a list of cages this was actually in the thank you next book tag thank you next you get the gist and i just couldn't get into the story i just wasn't in the mood for this type of like a slow story at that time but i really think i might like this because i was so excited for it that's why i bought it in print if I'm really excited for a book, then I actually buy it and don't just get it from the library. And this was one of those books, but I just couldn't really get into the characters. Like, they were so basic, and I couldn't get into the story, and it was just going so slow, and I just abandoned it. But I really want to give it a second chance. All right, so the next prompt is to find a book with a king in it. And, like, I'm pretty sure Cinderella is dead has a king, but I'm also sure that Aragon has a king. But it's been a while since I read that, and I haven't read Cinderella is dead yet. But I'm pretty sure both of those books have kings. And those are the only books I'm looking at that would have kings. We're just going to assume that they do. I say next prompt is to find a book that is purple with its dust jacket off. Please be purple. Please be purple. Purple! Cinderella's dead. I don't know how many prompts I've used Cinderella's dead for. I actually did start this book. But then I remembered Ember and Ember in the actual in my TBR for this month. So I quit after like 11 pages. But yeah. Purple under a dust jacket. You guys understand. All right, so the next prompt is to find a book that you will read by the end of this year. I have so many books on here that I want to read by the end of this year. The one that is on my TBR for next month is Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Adeyemi. I'm buddy reading this with Kirsten Corner. This is one of my, what is it called? Summer. You're trash, kid. Summer. Summer. Summer reads, right? Like the books they make you read in the summer. That school makes you read in the summer. I don't know why you have to read. Required reading. Required reading. And this is all my required reading for school. Alright guys, so that was the bookshelf scavenger hunt. I was going to do the other one. But like this video is already like 30 minutes long. I don't know how long it is after editing. It might be under 10 and then I'll look stupid. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. Comment down below if you enjoyed it or if you have any thoughts on any of the books I mentioned. Subscribe. I post series every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I'll see you next time with another video. Okay, bye, BookTube. Bye.